Hey, what's up everybody? Clifton here with Clifton WP. Welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, you're gonna be learning how to customize the WooCommerce product catalog loop using Cadence ShopKit. Now, if you don't know what the product loop is, it's essentially when you're looking at your e-commerce archive pages and you see the listings of each product, the information contained within those listings and even the layout of those can actually be customized to your tastes. And what's gonna allow you to be able to do that is Cadence ShopKit. So if you're ready to learn how to customize your product loops in your e-commerce websites, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of what we're gonna be learning in regards to the product loop. Now, one thing that's gonna be very important uh, is that uh, this is for a WordPress site that is built with WooCommerce. And in this particular tutorial, I am using the Bike Shop Cadence Starter Template. You will find this in the Cadence Starter Template plugin. And that'll allow you to quickly have a shop up and going if you wanna follow along with this tutorial. Now, when we talk about the product loop, whenever you have set up your e-commerce website using WooCommerce, if you go to the shop page or any of the category uh, product pages, you'll see the products for that page. This is the product archive, right? And essentially, when we talk about the loop or, or the product loop, what we're talking about is actually each individual product listing. The loop is something that is ubiquitous through WordPress. It's something that is the core aspect of WordPress and it's used in varying different custom post types or content post types. And in this particular case, this is the product loop. And what this loop's instruction is saying to this page is go into the database and for every product that you find there, please return an image of the product, the title of the product, the price, and also an add to cart button and then loop that instruction over and over again until there are no more products, right? So it's gonna display all the products in the same format, returning the same information. What Cadence ShopKit will allow you to do is it'll allow you to basically customize the information that is returned or not returned, right? So with Cadence ShopKit, we're gonna basically be able to customize how this looks, how this individual listing looks or how each individual listing looks so that we can provide the user experience that we desire for our buyers, okay? To show you a good example of this, um, let's go ahead and take a look at some that I've already created. And then what we're gonna do after that is we're going to start from scratch, so we'll start from a blank slate, and I'll show you exactly how to do one of your own. All right, so if we go over here to, let's go to our back end of the site. And over here, you'll see where I've created some custom product loops, and these are all off right now. So let's go ahead and turn one of these on. So I'm gonna turn this one on, okay? And if we go back to our products page, okay, this is the default uh, Cadence uh, product archive, which looks pretty good, by the way, <laughs> but this is the default. But now that I've turned that one on, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the screen. And what you'll notice now is that we now have a new details button that wasn't there before. Okay, so now there's a details button. So I've essentially customized the loop and I've told it, hey, add this details button. And what does the details button do? Well, if you click on it, it will take you to the details of the product, right? It takes you to the single product page. If we go back, typically if you just had the add to cart button and you clicked on it, it would basically add the product to cart. Okay, but now what I've done is I've added an additional button that just takes you to the actual product itself. I've also changed the layout. So you can see here it's now a two column layout with the product title uh, to the left and the pricing to the left, and then the clickable buttons on the right. Okay, let's take a look at one more example and then we'll go ahead and start building one of our own. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my Woo templates over here and let's look at, let's look at this one. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this one on and I'll turn this one off. And if we go back to our products page and I refresh the screen, we can see now that we have the just the two column with the add to cart on the right and the details button has now disappeared. But we've changed the layout of the product loop. 
okay? And this will apply everywhere that there's a, a loop. So if I go back to the home page, we have a loop going on there. We can see that it actually, actually applies here as well, okay? Let's look at one more and then we'll get to work, okay? So if we go to back to our templates here, I'm gonna turn this one off. And we're going to go ahead and let's take a look at this custom product loop. Let's go back. And when I refresh the page, so now what we can see here is that we have changed the loop to only have a view details button. So no more at the cart. So now if you have a shop where you don't want people to add to the cart directly from the archive page, you want them to just be able to view the details. So you're putting one additional click and then they can view the details of the product and then they can add to cart. Then this type of layout will allow you to be able to do that. And what's interesting about the product loop is you can assign different product loops to different categories. So different categories can have different behaviors. And that's what's very powerful about Cadence ShopKit is you can create a custom loop for each different uh, product archive. Now that you've seen some examples, let's go ahead and start from the beginning and create these product loops from scratch. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we have here is a fresh install of WordPress with the 2023 default theme. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install our base theme, which is going to be cadence and plugins that we're going to need. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the dashboard, go to appearance, go to themes, click on add new, and you're going to do a search for cadence. Cadence is a free theme in the WordPress repository. It's probably one of the best Gutenberg based themes on the market today. We're going to go ahead and install it and then click on activate. Okay, so now we've installed our Cadence theme and if we go to the front end of the website, we will see the default uh, Cadence layout, okay? Next thing that I wanna do is I wanna also wanna install Cadence blocks. So I'm gonna go to, the, uh, go to the plugins, go back to the dashboard, go to plugins, click on add new, and we're gonna do search for Cadence blocks. Okay, see here. And here are the, here's the Cadence blocks. We're gonna go ahead and install that. Cadence blocks basically grants Gutenberg page builder features. And it's one of the easiest ways to be able to build out pages with, um, with WordPress today, okay? So now we've installed Cadence blocks. Now I'm also gonna install the Cadence starter templates, okay? Because we're gonna go ahead and install a starter template so we can get to creating the product loop as quickly as possible. So go ahead and click on Install Cadence Starter Templates. If you're not seeing this notice over here, not to worry, just go to Plugins, go to Add New, and you can do a search for Cadence Starter Templates, and you'll see it here as well. Click on Install and Activate. And now we'll have our Cadence, we have our Cadence blocks installed, our Cadence Starter Templates are installed, and we also have our Cadence theme installed as well. The next step is for us to go ahead and download Cadence Shop Kit. And also we're gonna add the Cadence Pro Theme add-on so we can get access to the Bike Shop Starter Template. All right, so if you don't have the Cadence Shop Kit plugin or the Cadence Pro Theme add-on, I highly recommend that you pick it up from Cadence and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get it. You can go to cliftonwp.com slash cadence that will take you to the Cadence website. That is an affiliate link, so anything you purchase from this website via that link will provide a commission which goes to support the channel. So thank you very much in advance for doing that. Now, when you get here, if you go to products, you'll see that Cadence has premium bundles. They have the Cadence theme, Cadence shop kits, Cadence cloud, Cadence conversions, and Cadence blocks. They have a whole host of products and a number of ways for you to pick them up. Now the Cadence Shop Kit is available as a standalone, meaning you can just buy it by itself, but you can also purchase it as part of the Cadence Bundle. And I typically recommend the Cadence Bundle only because not only do you get the Cadence Shop Kit, but you also get Cadence Blocks Pro, you get Cadence Themes Pro, you get the Pro Starter Templates, and a whole host of other awesome plugins that Cadence has. In addition to that, you also get exclusive access to all their future products. So when I picked up Cadence, they didn't have this many uh, products at the time and they've just been releasing some really awesome stuff. So I'm really glad that I have the bundle. 
But of course, you can also pick up the Cadence uh, ShopKit standalone version as well, but you won't have access to all these other awesome products that they have as well. Now, these are annually renewing payments when you purchase these. Cadence also has a lifetime access to all of their products. So if you go to pricing and you'll see over here, we have the essential bundle and you have the full bundle. So Cadence ShopKit is only available in the full bundle. However, you can also get the lifetime full bundle where you make one payment and you get access to all their uh, products and no additional payments after that, including access to all their future products. So if you're working with clients or you anticipate you're gonna be building a, a lot of websites, this is an incredible value uh, to have, especially in the WordPress space today where not a lot of companies are offering lifetime value. So I highly recommend if you're able to pick up the lifetime bundle, but at the very least get the full bundle so that you can have access to the Cadence WooCommerce Shop Kit. Okay, so now that you know where to get your Cadence bundle, let's go ahead and download it from our account. So in your uh, account, after you've picked up the bundle, you will see the shop kit plugin right over here, the latest version. Just go ahead and click download to download that one. And we're also gonna download the Cadence Pro plugin premium add-on. And the reason we want the premium add-on is because if you're following along, this will give you access to the Pro Starter templates as well, okay? So now that we've downloaded both of those, let's go back to our install over here. And we're gonna to go to plugins, click on add new. You're gonna upload your plugin, choose file. And here is our, here's our Cadence ShopKit plugin, and this is our Cadence Pro Theme add-on. So let's just go ahead and upload the ShopKit first, activate, and then I'm gonna click on add new, upload, choose file, and now we're gonna upload our Cadence Pro theme add-on and install and activate. And next we need to activate our license key for each of these. So we basically click on the link here and then we'll add our license key and then repeat the process for ShopKit. And now we are ready to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is basically installing our starter template. Okay, so to install a Cadence starter template or Cadence e-commerce starter template, we're gonna to go to Appearance, Cadence, and click on Starter Templates. Once you do that, you'll see all the starter templates that are available to you from the Cadence starter template plugin. And because we have the Pro Theme add-on installed, we're also gonna get access to all the Pro starter templates as well. These are some very beautiful uh, templates that provide an excellent starting point for any kind of website that you wanna build. But for this particular tutorial, we are working on the product loop, so we're gonna be selecting an e-commerce template, and you can use the filter over here and select e-commerce. Just make sure that the setting over here is set to Gutenberg, and then we want the bike shop. When you click on a starter template, you'll see the uh, option to change the color scheme of that template. There'll be a preview of the template here on the right. You can also change the font family as well. So you can select anything you want. If you prefer a different font, it changes in real time. And you can also change the uh, colors as well. That data change in real time as well. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep everything at the default. And then right here, you're gonna see the required plugin. So if you have a plugin that's not installed, it will tell you, and if you have a plugin that is absolutely required, you'll see that in red. And you can see over here, it's saying that the Cadence Blocks Pro plugin is not installed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of here and then go ahead and install that plugin. And that is something that you do get with the Cadence bundle. So we're gonna go back to our account and we're gonna look for the Cadence Blocks Pro, which is this one right over here. Click on download. And we now have that, and I'm gonna go back to my install. I'm gonna to go to plugins, click on add new, upload. I'm gonna choose a file, and we're gonna grab our Cadence Blocks Pro and install. Activate, all right, and then we're gonna add our license key. Now that we've added our license key, we're gonna go back to appearance, Cadence, starter templates, do a search for the e-commerce templates, and we want the bike shop. I'm gonna click on it. And I'm gonna select that I want to install the full site. I'm gonna select Start Importing. Okay, now the site is imported and we're gonna go ahead and view the site on the front end. And we can see now we have a full-blown e-commerce website ready to go. 
and that looks great. Okay, so up next, now we're gonna go ahead and customize the loop. So right now, everything is at default. So if we look at the loop right now, you can see it has just the regular information. And now we're gonna go ahead and start customizing this so that it uh, will look a variety of different ways. Okay, so to create our custom product loop, we're gonna go back to the dashboard and we're gonna engage with ShopKit. So you'll see the ShopKit link here at the bottom. Go ahead and click on that. Now ShopKit has about 15 different modules that allow you to enhance your e-commerce uh, website that's built with WooCommerse. And everything from variation swatches to checkout editors and conditional cart banners, it's all there and it's pretty fantastic. But the one that we're interested in is gonna be the product templates. Now, when you select the product templates, you'll have to enable it, click on save, and then you can actually refresh your dashboard. And when you do that, when you go to the products link, underneath the products link, you're gonna find the Woo templates link over here. Click on that and that'll give you the area where you can go to start creating the custom product catalog loop item. You can also create custom single products and custom product archives in here as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna go ahead and create our first one. So let's click on add new. And in the interface, it's gonna ask you which template do you want to create? And for us, we wanna create the product catalog loop item. So select that one. And then you'll have some pre-built templates to select from. There's a blank one and there's one that's already uh, set up. We're going to select this one because it's pretty close to the one that we want to customize anyway. So let's go ahead and select that. All right. And now we have our loop item. Okay. So you're, you're seeing only one loop item, but everything that you do here will apply across the board to all the other loop items. Okay. So the way the loop works is again, it's just asking for that instruction to return certain items and then repeat that in a loop. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and start customizing our loop item. Now, if you open up the block inserter while you're in the Woo templates interface, you'll notice that there are actual blocks that are dedicated to the Woo template blocks. So here, here are the Woo template blocks. So you have your product price, your product title, short description, product tabs, and so on. So you can place all this information inside of the loop and have your loop look any way that you want it to, to look. The other thing that we can do is we can also change the layout of our loop. So in this case, what we wanna do, we just wanna make a simple change to this layout. If we were to select, let's select, this, uh, select the title here, and you open up the list view, you can see what this layout is entirely made up of, right? It's made of product image, there's a row layout, a section, product title, product rating, and product price, okay? So we're gonna completely change this. So first is I wanna get rid of the product rating. Let's go ahead and remove that, okay? Next, I notice this is inside of a row and it's a one column row. I'm gonna increase the columns to two columns. So that's gonna give me this second section here on the right so I can add some more information to it, okay? Let's go ahead and close up list view. I'm gonna click on the plus sign and I'm gonna search for add to cart. Okay, this is gonna allow me to add the add to cart button in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. All right, and so now I have a two column uh, row layout product loop item, okay? I think the text here is a little bit big because we have these two columns now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, uh, select the title, move over here to the right, click on style settings, and we're gonna reduce the font size to 14 pixels. I'm also gonna do the same thing for the price. Just select it, move over to the right side select price style and let's reduce this to 14 pixels. Okay, and we'll just stop here. Let's go ahead and publish this and let's go ahead and take a look at what our product archive looks like now. So this is how it was before. And if I refresh the screen, you'll notice that nothing happened. And the reason why nothing happened is because we have not assigned our new product loop template to the shop archive. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go back to our Woo template, move over to the right-hand side over here, click on the template settings icon, and we're gonna click on the display settings, and we want this to show up on all product loops for now, and we're gonna click on update. Now that we've done that, if we go back to our products, refresh the screen, you'll notice that our new layout is now in effect. Okay, so we now have the add to cart on the right, the title and the pricing is on the left. 
and everything still works correctly. So if I click on add to cart, it will add it to the cart for me. Okay. Let's go ahead and make uh, some additional changes. So we go back to our Woo template here. And what I want to do is I want to add a details button. And the reason I want to add a details button is because if you go to the products archive, uh, if you click on the image, it will take you to the details of the product. However, if you were to just in the shop and the only other link that you can see here, that's a descriptive link is the add to cart link. So what if we wanted to put a small button here that just said details and this way people have more ways to get to the product details. They can click on the image or they can just click on the, on a details button and that would take them to get more information. So that's what we're going to create next. So let's go back to our Wu template build out here and I want to select the second section, click on the plus sign and we're going to add an info box. Now the info box is probably one of the most versatile blocks in the cadence repertoire. You can use it for so many different things. In this case, we're going to use it to create a button. So go ahead and select the block. Look over to the right. Make sure that you're in the block settings by clicking on the cog wheel. Scroll down. And the first thing that I'm going to do is for this container settings here, I'm going to set the container padding. Uh, we're going to set that to, let's open that up, to the top being zero and the bottom will be zero as well. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to media settings and I'm going to get rid of the icon that we have now and replace it with another icon. So I'm going to close that out and we're going to search for bike or bicycle. There it is. Okay. So I want a bicycle. Excellent. We're going to reduce the size of this bicycle to 18 pixels or maybe 20 pixels would be more appropriate so we can still see it. All right, and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this text. So scroll down, look for the text section right here, text settings, and we're gonna to toggle off show text. Now, the next thing that I wanna do here is I also want to configure the title. So I don't want it to say title. Let's just go ahead and select that. And we're gonna say, this should say details. Okay, all right. And we notice that it's a little bit big. So move over to the right, click on the title settings. And we're going to reduce the font size to 14 pixels. Let's also give it a line height of 24 pixels for now. Okay. Now I, I want this icon to be to the right of the title. So I'm going to scroll back up to my media settings. And here I notice it's set to align to the top. We're going to make this align to the left. Excellent. Now, I, and now we notice we have a, all the spacing going on. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to scroll down right over here where we have the icon. And what we're looking for is the media padding. I'm going to, for now, set that to zero. And I'm also going to set the media margins to zero. So everything should be zeroed out. Okay, great. All right, now I'm also going to select our container. Scroll back up. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to set everything to zero here. So there is no uh, on the right should be zero left zero. That way I can customize this exactly how I want it to be. Okay. I'm going to scroll down to the title over here, title settings. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll notice that there's a, there are margins set up for this title. Let's go ahead and set all that to zero for now. All right. So now everything is kind of in alignment. Okay, so now we can now start customizing how we want this to look. So I'm going to scroll up to the text transformation and we're going to change this to uppercase. Okay, then I'm going to scroll up to the media settings, which is the icon. And what I want to do is I want to create some spacing now, but just on my own terms. So let's say five pixels on the right and five pixels on the left. Okay, that looks a lot better. Let's add a little bit more pixels on the right. Maybe 10 pixels, okay. And we can add some on the same, okay. So now this looks pretty good. I also wanna make sure that my icon is vertically aligned to the middle, which it looks like it is. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna move this up above the add to cart. So select the 
select the info box, click on the little arrow that will take it up here. And it's right under, right on top of the add to cart. Then we're going to give it some color. So select the, select the info box on the right hand side, go to the container background and we'll select the color. We'll use our highlight color here and on the hover, we'll give it the hover color. And then we're going to scroll down to the title text and give the title color a white color and hover should be also white. And then our icon also needs to be white. So back up to our icon, set that to white, set the hover to white as well. Okay. So, so far this looks pretty good. Now there's a lot of, it's pretty close here. So let's create some space. I'm going to go ahead and select the info box, I'm going to scroll down. And what we're looking for is the container margin. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and add 10 pixels to that. All right. So far, this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click on update and let's see how this looks on the front end. So if we go to the shop, refresh the screen. All right. This looks pretty good. So we have our little, our details box over here. We have our add to cart box and the next thing that we need to do now is add the link so that when people click on the details button, it takes them to the details of the bike. So let's go back to our Woo template, select the details box, look over to the right, and you're going to be looking for the link field. It's at the very top, right underneath all the quick layout presets. What you want to do here is we're going to link this dynamically so that it applies to each individual loop item. So I'm going to click on the dynamic link enable it. And then we're going to go to the link here, select post URL, leave the link source at current post, and then go ahead and update the Woo template. And now when we go back to our shop, refresh the screen, if we click on any of the details, it takes us exactly to that product. All right. And you'll notice that all our changes carry over even to related products. If we go to the home page, anywhere the loop is present, it will adopt the, the loop layout that we've created. Okay. And that is how you make, you can customize the look of your custom loop. Let's do one more and create a, a different layout. And that way we have two options that we can select from for this next layout. This is actually going to be very easy. Or if you look at the shop page right now and with the new uh, custom product loop that we have, so we have this details button and we have the add to cart. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to get rid of the add to cart and we're going to move this details button down to the bottom. This way we would have a, a shop page where there is no add to cart on the archive page. You actually have to view the details of the bike before you purchase it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go back to the dashboard. And this is going to be extremely easy underneath the products, select Woo templates. And if you look at the first one that we created, all we need to do now is we're just going to duplicate that one. So click on the duplicate link and a second one will be created for us. Okay. Now in this second one, what we want to do is we just want to make our changes directly to the template we've already created. So to do that, just go ahead and open up the list view, select this row layout. And what you can do is you can click on the ellipses here and click on insert after. And what we want to do here is we want to add a new row. So do a forward slash search for row layout, and we're going to add a single column row just like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select the info box button that we created initially, and we're going to drag that into that new row. Okay. And then here with the add to cart, we will no longer be needing this. So let's just go ahead and remove that. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to make this back into a one column row again. So select this row move over to the right and just reduce this to one column. Okay. Now what we can do here is we can now go back and increase the size of this so that it looks a little bit, a little bit bigger. So select the title, go to styling settings, and let's increase this to 18 pixels. We're also going to do the same thing for the price. Select the price, price style, 
and we'll make this 18 pixels as well. Okay. Awesome. Now the next thing we need to do is reduce some spacing over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce actually the spacing around the button itself. Okay, you can just drag it that way, or you can just go to padding and margin and set these to zero. All right, so, so far this looks pretty good. So let's take a look at how it looks on the front end. Let's go ahead and click on publish. And if we go to the shop page on the front end of the site and we refresh the screen, ah, we actually forgot to assign it. So what we need to do is go back, click on updates. Let's go back to our list. So this is our second loop over here that we just created. We need to turn one of these off. So let's turn the initial one off and make sure that only this one is on, okay? And now that we've done that, let's go to products, refresh the screen, and here we can see now we just have uh, this really cool layout over here where we have the icon and the details, and if we were to click on this, it takes us to the details of the bike. Okay, it looks really nice that way. And you can style this pretty much any way that you, that you want, okay? If you want to have uh, a shorter, uh, maybe not such a full width button. Very easy to do. Let's just go back, click on edit for our custom loop for the second one. And I can select this, look over to the right, scroll down. And what you're looking for is the container settings. Look for the margin. And over here, you can actually add say a 50 pixel margin if you want, so that it just comes off the edge a little bit, All right? And then click on update. And if we look at the products, refresh, now you have a much shorter button. So now we have these two different product loops. And if you, one thing you'll notice is they actually apply to all the other products. So if we were to go to some of our categories here, so we've got uh, cyclocross, or um, actually, let's go back to the dashboard and let's actually access the menus and we want our primary menu select and what we're going to do is we're going to add some of those categories on it so we can look at what the different category categories look like as well so if you'll notice we don't have our woocommerce categories in here that's very easy to fix just scroll up here to screen options and we're gonna turn on our product categories by selecting the checkbox. And once we've done that, you'll see now that we have product categories. Go ahead and open that up and we'll just add them all. So these are created by default in the starter template. Just drag them under the shop so we get access to them. There we go. Click on save menu. And now when we go to the front end of the website, you'll see the shop here. And now we have those additional categories. So I can now just look at maybe mountain bikes by themselves, so we have three mountain bikes. And you can see that this has adopted our new uh, layout. So let's say, for instance, you want you want the mountain bikes, you wanna require that people view the details first before they can add it to the cart. So you want that layout. So you want this layout for just the mountain bikes, but you would like the uh, other more uh, choice layout for the gravel bikes. So this is our gravel bikes. So let me show you how to assign uh, different layouts or different product loop layouts to different categories. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the dashboard. You're gonna go to products, Woo templates, and let's edit here the most recent one that we created. So the second one with the long details over here. Look over here to the right and select the template settings. And under the display settings, you see here where it's assigned to all product loops. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say show on, has category term, and you can then select the one that you want. So we want this to be on the mountains. Click on update, All right? And then we're gonna go back out to our custom loops by clicking on the WordPress icon over there. And let's go to the second one that's currently in draft mode. We're gonna click on edit, and we're gonna say we want this one. So just go to the template settings over here click on display settings, all product loops, and we're gonna say show on the ones that have the category term of gravel, and click on publish. Excellent, so now when we go back to our site here, 
to go to the front end. So if you notice here where we have a mixture of different ones, right? Anything in that category will now display. <laughs> I don't know if you want it this way, but it will display differently depending on the category that it's in. But where this is most effective, obviously, is going to be in the category, right? So if I look at the mountain bikes, I can see here that I get to be able to view the details, right? And if I were to look at the gravel bikes, I get this uh, other dynamic where I can view the details and add to cart. Uh, what I prefer actually is just to have all my, you know, all my product loops look the same. If we go to Woo templates, and this is the most recent one that we created, I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off. And then here in the custom loop, I'm going to click on edit. So this is the first one that we created and the one that I like. I'm going to come over here to the template settings, open that up, go to display settings, and I'm going to close out the has category term and make sure you have the all product loops selected. Click on update. And then if we go back to the list that we have, I just want to make sure that it is on, uh, it is on, it is published. And this way, when I go back to the shop, I can see that it actually, the product loop item, it displays the way that I like it. Okay. And with that, that will conclude our tutorial on how to create a custom product loop for your e-commerce website that's powered by WooCommerce and Cadence ShopKit. Do me a big favor. If you liked this tutorial, go ahead and smash the like button. And if you're new to the channel and have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I release new tutorials. And if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about here today, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'd be more than happy to read them and we'll answer them as quickly and as thoroughly as I can. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Once again, thank you very much for watching the video. And for those of you who are supporting my channel by either purchasing through my affiliate links or sending me the thank yous or sending me thank you comments, I really, really appreciate that. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.